Okay, so now we're back up and running, and um, we are going to move to the next step, which is modifying a file that's already on the uh, in the directory in the install directory called config.txt. Now it looks like a giant jumbled overlay. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to copy these three uh, settings over into that file. Uh, they just tweak some of the GPIO pins to do what we need them to do with the equipment we're going to uh, be controlling. So you just hit Control C or, or copy and then you come over here and you paste it into the bottom of your file and then you file, save, close. That's it. That's done. And now it's time to eject our SD card from the computer and plug it into our Raspberry Pi. Uh, I suggest you go over here and usually you you know you stop it or you eject your your card because if you just yank it out of your computer uh, you could potentially cause a spark and ruin your SD card so that's that I'm going to pause the video and plug the card into my Pi for the next step okay so we've got our SD card plugged into our Pi we've plugged our Pi into the power source and if our Wi-Fi files are working properly our Pi should now be connected to the network. You can actually test to see if it is. If you can log into your router, you'll see a new device show up with the default name for a Raspberry Pi, which is just simply Raspberry Pi. So in our PuTTY program, we're going to pull up our PuTTY program, we're going to type Raspberry Pi in the host name or the IP address on your network. Uh, sometimes the Raspberry Pi name doesn't work and you have to type in the actual IP so you might have to tinker with it here uh, once we do that we'll go down to open and here we go it opens up our telnet box and sometimes you'll get a warning saying you're connecting to an insecure device just click OK the default login and password for a Raspberry Pi uh, the login is Pi and the password is raspberry r-a-s-p-b-e-r-r-y enter and it does its thing loads up and now we are now in our raspberry pi so we have to make some tweaks to the actual raspberry pi here uh, before we go on to the next step of installing the software that will run our aquarium stuff um, <coughs> down here you're going to see in the instructions uh, that it tells you to update your, your operating system. If you've got the newest version, chances are you don't need to do it, but uh, you know, I, I suggest do it anyway. It doesn't take very long. So all you got to do is copy each line and paste it into the, the PuTTY terminal here. So we're going to right click copy, come over to the terminal. To paste it in PuTTY in the Pi, you just right click uh, with your mouse there and it'll just pop that in hit enter it'll do its thing now I've I've done all this stuff already because some of this has you know a, a minute or two load time and you don't need to watch me do that so you update it and then you upgrade it and then you change the system to use what's called network time uh, so you do this line and then lastly we're gonna do the time sync line here that will help in terms of when we're doing timers for our aquarium equipment it will make a stable time in the system for those timers to be used overall next thing you want to do is we're going to modify some things in the config file for the Raspi, uh, raspberry pi so we're going to type you can either type or copy paste sudo raspy pi when you're doing things in the linux environment the comment sudo means you're doing it as a super user usually you can't modify and change things if you were just to say type raspy config it'll show you the options but nothing's going to save so you're going to want to run that as the administrator in the system so to do that we type sudo that means allow the command to make some changes first thing we're going to do is we're going to change our user password so if someone is hacking your network they're not just going to be able to walk in with the default credentials uh, so I'm going to put a new password in here done uh, we're gonna look at our network credentials here I suggest change your host name of your Raspberry Pi to reflect what the controller is going to be doing uh, so my big tank is going to be something like 
140 pie for 140 gallons. Um, we're gonna let's just pretend we're gonna do one for like a frag tank here. So we're gonna erase that frag tank. So this is gonna be the frag tank controller. And anything else in there? Now, if you're having troubles connecting to the Wi-Fi network with the uh, original instructions, you can connect a monitor, keyboard, and mouse. You can come into the Raspi config here and you can actually see uh, the Wi-Fi credentials and information there. Maybe typing the stuff into here through this config will remedy the problem uh, as opposed to maybe doing it through the um, just the file management manipulation direction. So we shall get out of here. Now we need to change some of the interfacing options. <coughs> we want to change uh, to one wire, so we'll go down here to one wire. Uh, you're going to want to enable that. Uh, I've already gone ahead and done that. So, uh, oh, there's an error. That's because I'm saying no. Well, just in case, I'm going <laughs> to do that again. It takes just a second. Some of the things, like setting up the VNC, takes a few a few moments. Uh, but we'll so we'll skip that. Uh, you can also do the SSH, make sure it's enabled here. Uh, do your VNC, make sure it's enabled. That process does take some time setting up the VNC because it's got to do some things in your Pi. Uh, your SBI, you want to make sure that's enabled too. And uh, your actually I2C, get that enabled as well. And one wire, get that enabled as well. So we're going to back out of this. And that's it for the configuration. It's, it's pretty simple, straightforward. We go over to finish, hit enter. It's going to ask you if you want to reboot it. You're going to hit yes. You're going to, it's going to basically kick you out of this. At this point, you can close this putty window because it won't be working. You're going to have to reopen putty to reconnect to your Raspberry Pi. Uh, but when we reconnect to it this time, we're going to, we have to connect to the new host name. So we called ours frag tank and I'm just going to pause the video here to give the Pi a minute to actually initialize the new settings and then we'll try to uh, connect to it in just a second. Okay so we're going to now we've given the Pi a minute to reboot the system and now we're going to try to connect to it with its new host name open oh, we type in our login is still Pi but we've changed the password to the new one, type it in, login, and there we go. We are up and running. Our Raspberry Pi now has the operating system installed. We've connected to it wirelessly over the network, and we've tweaked some of the files uh, in the Pi and in the config uh, that, to give us the most stable, reasonable Pi that we need to build our aquarium controller software on. It was pretty simple. There's not much programming you know all you're really doing is is copying and saving some files that's it so on to the next video where we're going to install the software that controls our aquarium all right see you there